Well, good evening. Welcome to worship. I am Pastor Matt. It's a pleasure to have all of you joining us as we celebrate Jesus and those of you joining us online. Uh, Tonight we're in for a treat. It's our first step of Holy Week as we walk from today, Monday, Thursday, into tomorrow, Good Friday, and of course, then travel to the empty tomb on Easter. But also tonight we are celebrating with a number of our young people who are taking communion for the very first time tonight. What a special treat for them to take communion on the very evening that Jesus celebrated it with his disciples as well. So a beautiful evening indeed for all of us. Uh, Friends, for everyone here, uh, we love to receive your prayers. If you have any prayer requests, we'd love for you to get those in. Prayers of concern as well as prayers of thanksgiving, get those in. We will not pray over them in worship tonight, but those are sent to myself and Pastor Carl. We'll pray over those as well as all of our prayer warriors in our church. So know that your prayers are being lifted up all week long. Uh, And if you are so moved to give an offering tonight, you can do so through the Church Center app as well as online at pop.church. Uh, Or you can drop something in the plate as an offering as you leave this evening. For those of you who are joining us online, love for you to check in. Let us know that you're joining us so we know that you're celebrating Jesus and Holy Week with us this year. Tonight, tonight we're going to talk about communion. We're going to talk about the Lord's Supper and what that all means for us and how our circle of life and Jesus' circle of knowledge come connected together in community. Friends, with all of that said this evening, oh, one other announcement before I forget. Uh, If you did not and are looking for a communion packet, you can receive one in the back. You just need to go back there. Otherwise, you can come forward tonight for communion as well. With all of that said, friends, why don't we stand as we open worship this evening with our call to worship. Words from Psalm 116. How can I repay the Lord for all the good he has done for me? I will fulfill my vow to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Lord, I am indeed your servant. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. And we sing of our Lord. That's all right, cause I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed when others say I'll never be enough. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world, in the world. Every time I fall, there'll be those who will call me a mistake. But that's okay, cause I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed. When I'm say I'll never be enough. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. In the world 
is greater. I am learning to run freely, understand just how he sees me, and it makes me love him more and more. He's greater, he's greater. There'll be days I lose the battle, grace says that it doesn't matter, cause cross already won the war. He's greater, he's greater. I am learning to run freely, understand just how he sees me, and it makes me love him more and more. He's greater, he's greater. We're gathered here in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The psalmist declares, I love the Lord because he's heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. We gather as a community in need of a Savior. We offer our honest confession in faith and trust in our covenant God, knowing that God hears us our voice. Let's take some time in silence to talk to God, and then we'll join in a confession together. We pray together the words on the screen. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we have failed to fulfill your will for us. We betray our neighbors, desert our friends, and run in fear when we should be loyal. Though you have bound yourself to us, we have not bound ourselves to you. God, have mercy on us, weak and willful people, Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. To Christ be praised forever. Amen. We have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Jesus we remember tonight is the Savior of the world. In Christ, we are forgiven, and through him, God abides with even us. Praise Praise God, God, from whom all blessings flow. You may be seated as we prepare to hear from God's word. Our reading is taken from the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with the 22nd verse. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine 
until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having heard from God's word, we stand and respond to that word by confessing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Church, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do, 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 do. How quickly we forget the God who lives in every day. How easy to lose sight that you reside in the mundane. How quickly we forget the power that's running through our veins. The kind of power that empties grace. And oh, my soul, remember who you're talking to. The only one who death bows to. That's the God who walks with you. And oh, my soul. Lest we not forget the voice that's holding back the waves Was once the voice that told the skies to pour them into place Let us join the endless song of everlasting praise The only God who empties grace Oh my soul, remember who you're 
you're talking to The only one who death bows to That's the God who walks with you And all my soul You know that if he did it then He can do it all again His power can still raise the dead Don't tell me that he's finished yet If you broke through the oceans, you could break through these chains. If your word made the mountains, it could move them all the same. If death fell before you and it's still on its face, then the power that raised you is about to move again. If you broke through the oceans, you can break through these chains. If your word made the mountains, we can move them all the same. If death fell before you and it's still on its face, then the power that raised you is about to move again. It's about to move again. That's the God who walks with you And oh my soul You know that if he did it then Then he can do it all again His power can still raise the dead Don't tell me that he's finished yet Will you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious Lord, we give you thanks that you want to be in community with us. And Lord, we thank you that in community, we get to be with you. Lord, we pray this all in your name and all God's people said, Amen. So tonight we have a really amazing event happening. As I said earlier in the service, we have multiple young men and women who are going to be celebrating their first communion tonight. Jennifer, do you know how many people, how many youth it is off the top of your head? Eleven. Eleven young men and women who are going to be celebrating their first communion tonight on the night that Jesus celebrated the Passover, Lord's Supper, the first communion. Tonight is also the, what we call the, the kickstart of Holy Week. Uh, a couple weeks ago, during one of our Wednesday night uh, meals, somebody asked me if I was ready for Holy Week, and I said no. And they said, well, but it's your Super Bowl. And I said, no, it's not. It's the World Series, because it's seven games in a row. They got a chuckle out of that too, Alex. I appreciate that. Thank you. But Holy Week starts with Monday, Thursday, and as I said, goes to the cross on Good Friday, but then we end with the hope of Easter. And our story tonight, our account tonight that we read of Jesus doing the Lord's Supper, the Passover meal with his disciples, is one of incredible uh, learnings for us. You see, I see Jesus in this account and his disciples in this account functioning in a very similar way to us, in two very separate circles. And Jesus and us and his disciples move in these circles all the time. And it's what communion is about, it's what life's about, and it's why we need our communion with God and with each other. And it starts with the very first thing. Jesus wants to be in community with us. 
You see, with his disciples, he got together <clears throat> excuse me, in the, in the upper room to celebrate the Passover meal. And he gathers them all in this big room around this big table and then shares bread and wine with them. But he changes the words of the Passover meal a little bit. He says, this is my body. This is my blood. And in communion, when they're taking this Lord's Supper, they're, they're connected to one another like, like family, like community, like, like a group that can't be separated. And friends, that's the same thing for us when we come up here to the table. We are community. We come forward, we stand here, we take Christ's body, we take Christ's blood in and with the bread and wine, and together we are community with Christ. We're connected and commune with Christ. In fact, I've always said that communion is kind of the root word of community because we commune together. And Jesus brings us this meal so that we can be in community with one another. And when we take it, we're taking in Jesus' essence, his self. And we do this so we're forgiven. But then there's the second part of this story that comes out, this account. And Jesus looks at his disciples and says, you're going to run away from me. You're going to turn your back on me. You are going to look away from me. And that's when Peter, oh, our favorite guy, Peter, steps up and he goes, I would never leave you. I'll never turn my back on you. In fact, I would die with you, Jesus. And I can just see Jesus looking at Peter and going, Oh, Peter, when the rooster crows, you will deny me. And all the disciples said the same thing. No, we won't. We won't do that. We would never turn our back on you. And Jesus says, you will. And Jesus says the same thing to us too. He knows we're going to fall away. He knows we're going to turn our back on him. He knows that we can't be perfect like he wants us to be perfect. He knows it. I can remember when I was younger and, and even yesterday, and I'd sit there and say, oh God, uh, I'm never going to do that again. And he looks at me simply and goes, oh, Matthew, because he knows. We turn our backs on God, and he knows we're going to do it even if we don't want to. And he knows it's going to happen. Trust him. And then there's this third movement in this account. Jesus goes to Gethsemane, right? And the disciples fall asleep, right? Jesus goes in a little bit. He tells some of the disciples to stay. He brings three more with him. He tells them to stay and pray with him. And then he goes and prays by himself. He comes back and they're sleeping. And what does he say? Couldn't you stay awake for a little longer? The disciples fell asleep. They couldn't handle it. They, their, their belief wavered in who Jesus was. And their belief wavered because they fell asleep to what God was asking them to do. Does that happen to us? Does it happen to you? I think we all fall asleep to our faith sometimes. And it's not fall asleep like I'm going to take a nap in church. It's fall asleep like... like I just don't want to do that. I'm being led to do this. I really want to do this. God, I love you, but man, that looks like so much fun. Man, I really want to just focus on that thing that I really shouldn't. I want to click on that site. I want to post that comment on what somebody else posted that got me all riled up. I want to, I want to, I want to. I want to fall asleep to my faith. See, friends, we do that a lot. 
But we have a blessed Lord who is absolutely amazing. And that is not the end of the story. That's not the end of our story. It's not the end of this account that we read. It's a blessing because what happens is Christ still says, come back to community with me. It's not in our uh, reading for tonight, but later on in one of the Gospels, we hear Jesus talk to Peter, and he says, do you love me, Peter? Peter says, I do. He says, then feed my sheep. And he does this three different times to Peter. And he does this to all of his disciples in welcoming them into himself. And friends, that's what he does for the disciples. And that's what he does here tonight and every time we come forward for communion. Jesus wants to be in community with us. And he wants us to be in community with each other. That's why when we come up here to the table, we're not just connecting with God, but we do it as a family and as a group. We come forward as a unit. We sit in our pew as a unit if we take the individual cups, and we're community together. It's not just community this way to God. It's community this way with all of us. And if you notice it, it's community in the form of a cross where those two circles connect in community, it brings us to a a cross. We are community in Christ. This is original artwork by our own very, very own Pastor Carl, who put that together. And I thought it was so meaningful for tonight. Because even though Jesus has one path for us, but he knows what's going to happen, and we have our own sinful path, it always comes back to the cross for us. As I was putting this together, I was reminded of an old story that I read a while ago. An old man is sitting in an old-fashioned diner. He's sitting by himself at a table, sipping on a cup of coffee. The waiter walks up to him and looks at him, and he says, Is your friend going to come tonight? He goes, I don't know. They're invited, but I don't know. Man puts his coffee cup down, it's empty. He looks at the waiter and the waiter goes to fill it up. Man's been sitting in this diner since 6.30 this evening. It's cold outside. He's bundled up. And he's been sitting waiting. Waiter brings him another cup of coffee and he drinks yet again. Waiter looks at him one more time and says, It's getting late. Are they coming? He says, I don't think so. Waiter brings him his check. He pays in cash, gets up, put his co- puts his coat on, puts his scarf on, his hat on, and he begins to walk out. The hostess looks at him as the waiter walks up behind him, and the hostess looks at the old man and says, tomorrow night, same time? He goes, yep, 6.30. The waiter looks at him and says, Think they'll show up tomorrow? The old man goes, they're always invited. At that moment, he walks out of the restaurant into a cold, dark night. At that very same moment, an individual walks into their house, their dorm room, their apartment, whatever they live in. They walk over to the couch and they sit down on it. They throw their bag on the floor and they grab the remote control for the TV. And as they do that, they look on their coffee table, they see their Bible sitting there, a prayer journal, devotional book sitting there. They think to themselves just for a second, yeah, I should have done that. But I had more important things to do. I had to study for a test. I had a big presentation tomorrow. I had practice. I had fill in the blank. And they hit the power button on the remote and they lay back in on the couch and fall asleep. Friends, that old man in that story is a representation of Jesus. And sometimes we're like the young person that walks into the house or the apartment 
and we think that we don't have enough time or enough energy to connect with God. But God's always there. All he wants us to do is talk. He wants to be in community with each of us. And friends, that's why we come forward tonight. We celebrate the community we have with Christ in communion, together in communion, together with Jesus in communion. Because in communion and in Christ, we have true community with each other and with God. And all God's people said, Amen. At this time, we gather our gifts of love and give them to our God of love in the form of our offerings. Friends, God's given us all that we have and all we are. And in our offerings, we just give him back a portion of what he has first given us. And so, friends, from our hearts, we give to God, knowing that he will use these gifts to grow his kingdom, to expand his reach, and to bless people throughout the world. Thank you, gentlemen. And so let us stand as we pray over these offerings this evening. Gracious Lord, it is with a joyous heart that we give you these offerings. We not only give you these, but we give you our time, our talents, our treasures. Lord, we give you ourselves. Use them to grow your kingdom and to touch other lives for you. And all God's people said, Amen. We continue our service this evening with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you all to be seated as Jennifer will come forward and announce the names of our First Communion students. So I will invite all of the First Communion students and their parents. You guys can come on up to the front. And as they're making their way up there, I will share the names of all the students that are taking their First Communion today. And we'd like you to step back about to here, if that's okay, so you can be in the shot. There you go. Okay, so we have uh, Abigail Geyer, Iris Fay, Diana Nagel, Benjamin Miller, Emma Lobatz, Ryan Hanley, Mason Delator, Bobby Brennan, Anna Biela, Ben Anderson, and Lucia Jacobo. So now I'm going to give you guys a few instructions. You have to turn around and face Matt. <laughs> and scoot back a little bit. You guys bit. can back up a little scoot bit. Back a little I... bit. Um, we'll have the students come in a little bit closer, and then parents can like stand behind them. Not, sorry. There we go. Now it's all you. Now it's all me? All right. So my instructions here say, students, please stand, but you're already doing that, so I'll skip that. (laughs) Children of God, you have studied the gift of the altar and the meaning of this meal of grace. You know why Jesus gave it and what it means to live a forgiven, forgiving life in Christ's name. I ask you, therefore, Do you prepare to receive our Lord Jesus Christ as he comes to you in his holy meal? Good job. All right. Have you examined your hearts and confessed your sins to Christ, asking for his power to wash you clean and give you new life? Do you truly believe that Jesus' blood was shed for you, that he has died for your sins, and that in his holy supper he now offers you exactly what he promised, his body and blood for forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation? Yes, we believe it. Come, Lord Jesus. Are you ready to give up 
all resentments, all grudges, all anger, and all sin that would keep you from living in full, the full and rich life Jesus wants, you, wants for you? Are you ready to live in his power, not for your own? Yes, yes we are ready. Come, Lord Jesus. All right, parents, come closer to your students. Stand closer to them, and I even invite you to put a hand or hands on them. Parents, will you make this meal of forgiveness a regular part of your family life as well? Will you examine your hearts, keep your own conscience clear, and help your children prepare rightly each time you come to the altar to receive this gift of grace? Parents, as you're closer to them, I invite you, if you're not, to please lay your hands on your child, blessing them and repeating with me the prayer that is on the screen. May this day be the first day of new life in our family. May this gift bring forgiveness to our hearts and to our home. And may the living, forgiving presence of Jesus be a gift of healing and hope to you, my beloved children. From this day on and forevermore, in Christ's name, amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. As we prepare to share in this meal together, we pause for a moment and prepare our hearts and minds to receive this amazing gift. And so I ask, do you believe you are a sinner? Yes. I believe it. I have failed God and others in my life. I am a sinner. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned. Do you need God's help and forgiveness for your life? Yes, I need the gift of life he gives through Jesus. What has Christ done for you? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. Do you believe that in communion you receive the true body and blood of Christ with the bread and wine? Yes, I believe it, because of his word and promise. Then friends, confessing this and knowing this to be true, approach the table with joy and grace, knowing that you are forgiven in Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. is calling oh come 
of your sacrifice. Lord, we come to you. We're amazed by you and all you've done. All you've done for us. You have set us free. Oh, the mystery of all you've done. All you've done for us. For all you've done. For all you've done. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen you, body and soul, to life everlasting. Go in peace and with great joy. Amen. We're going to pray a prayer here. I'm going to start and you're going to jump in with me. God of love, as in Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to us. so glad that you're here to celebrate First Communion and Monday Thursday together, remembering all that Jesus has done for us, and certainly you're invited back to continue the journey. Tomorrow, Good Friday, we'll be gathering as a faith family at noon, five, and seven, and then we'll have Easter celebrations on Saturday, 5 p.m., uh, as well as Sunday morning, 8, 9.30, and 11. So, um, God's blessings on your continued journey. Uh, We're going to have one more song, uh, but a word about after that song. Uh, So on Monday Thursday, uh, it is uh, traditional uh, for there to be a stripping of the altar, removing of all the elements in and around here. And there's silence during that time. And it's an opportunity to reflect on Jesus entering further into his suffering. So uh, an opportunity to meditate on the journey that lay ahead. So, uh, so sit tight while that happens after the song. Okay, uh, Receive this blessing uh, now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. the world.